let R be a relation on S. We say that R is reflexive if for all elements A in S, A is related to A. We say that R is symmetric if for all elements A and B in S. If A is related to B, then B is related to A. We also say that R is transitive if for all elements A, B and C in S. If A is related to B and B is related to C, then A is related to C. If R is reflexive, symmetric and transitive, we say that R is an equivalence relation. Let's look at some examples. First, let R be the set of ordered pairs x and y in R squared such that x is not equal to y. Since 1 is equal to 1, R is not reflexive. Note that x is not equal to y implies that y is not equal to x, so R is symmetric. Now, 1 is not equal to 2, and 2 is not equal to 1, but 1 equals 1. This means that A is related to B, and B is related to C, but A is not related to C. So R is not transitive. Secondly, let R be the set of ordered pairs x and y in R squared, such that x is less than y. Since x is not less than x, R is not reflexive. Also, x is less than y does not imply that y is less than x so R is not symmetric. However, X is less than Y, and Y is less than Z, implies that X is less than Z, so R is transitive. As a third example, let R be the set of ordered pairs A and B in Z squared, such that A is congruent to B mod M. From modular arithmetic, we know that A is congruent to A mod M for any A, so R is reflexive. Also, A is congruent to B mod M implies that B is congruent to A mod M, so R is symmetric. Also, A is congruent to B mod M, and B is congruent to C mod M implies that A is congruent to C mod M, so R is transitive. Hence, R is an equivalence relation. Let's give two more definitions. Let R be an equivalence relation on S. The equivalence class of an element A in S is defined as square bracket A, which equals the set of elements B in S such that A is related to B. Alternatively, it is equal to the set of elements B in S such that the ordered pair A, B is an element of R. We also define the quotient set of R on S, written as S over R, as the set of all equivalence classes of R. In other words, S over R is the set of square bracket A, where A is an element of S. As an example, let's consider R to be the set of ordered pairs A, B in Z squared, such that A is congruent to B mod 5. The equivalence class of 1 is the set of elements x in z, such that x is congruent to 1 mod 5, so it is equal to the set 1 plus 5k, where k is an integer. In other words, it is the set of all integers which give a remainder of 1 when divided by 5. We also see that the quotient set S over R consists of the equivalence class of 0, the equivalence class of 1, the equivalence class of 2, the equivalence class of 3, and the equivalence class of 4. There are no more elements, because the equivalence class of 5 is the same as the equivalence class of 0. Now, let's give some useful results regarding equivalence classes. Firstly, if A is related to B, then the equivalence classes are the same. Secondly, for all elements A and B in S, either the equivalence classes are the same, or they are disjoint. Thirdly, a partition on S is the same as a quotient set on S. For the first point, we use double inclusion to prove that the two sets are equal. Let C be an element of the equivalence class of A. 
then A is related to C. By assumption, A is related to B, which means that B is related to A, since R is symmetric. So B is related to A, and A is related to C, which implies that B is related to C, since R is transitive. This means that C is in the equivalence class of B. So the equivalence class of A is contained in the equivalence class of B. Conversely, let C be an element of the equivalence class of B. Then B is related to C. Now, A is related to B, and B is related to C, so A is related to C, since R is transitive. This implies that C is an element of the equivalence class of A. So the equivalence class of B is contained in the equivalence class of A. So they must be equal. For the second result, it suffices to show that whenever two equivalence classes have a common element, then they must be in fact the same. So let C be an element of the intersection of the two equivalence classes. Since C lies in the equivalence class of A, it implies that A is related to C. On the other hand, C is in the equivalence class of B means that B is related to C. We can write this as C is related to B, since R is symmetric. Now, A is related to C, and C is related to B. So we have that A is related to B, since R is transitive. Using the first result, we have that the equivalence class of A equals the equivalence class of B. For the third point, we have to show the implication in both directions. First, let R be an equivalence relation on S. By the second result, each element of S belongs to at most one equivalence class of R. Since R is reflexive, A lies in the equivalence class of A for all elements A in S. So each element of S belongs to exactly one equivalence class of R which means that S over R is a partition on S. Conversely, let the set of SI, where I lies in some index set, capital I, be a partition on S. We define a relation R on S as follows. It is equal to the set of ordered pairs A, B in S cross S, such that there exists an I in the index set, such that a and B lies in SI. Let A be an element of S. Then A lies in SI for some I in the index set, since the SI form a partition. So A, A is an element of R, which implies that R is reflexive. Next, let A, B be an element of R. Then there exists an I such that A and B lies in the set SI. This is the same as saying that B and A lies in a set SI, which means that B, A lies in R. So R is symmetric. Now, let A, B and B, C be elements of R. Then, there exist I and J such that A and B are elements of SI, and B and C are elements of SJ. In particular, B is an element of both SI and SJ, which implies that SI has to equal to SJ, since SI and SJ are part of a partition. Now A and C are elements of SI, which implies that A, C is an element of R. So R is transitive. Hence, R is an equivalence relation, and the set of SI is the quotient set S over R, which completes the proof.